I hope you guys are excited for today's video because clearly I'm not. <laughs> when I was younger, I was usually told that whenever you're looking for a problem, you most certainly will find one. So anyway, today we'll be doing a data log on VCDS and just see if this car has got a boost leak or not. So without any further ado, let's get into it. I won't be spending too much time on telling you what a boost leak is. Just to make it easy, that is whenever your turbo is not reaching the requested amount of air pressure. It could be because of multiple things such as a damaged pipe, a broken pipe, a, a bad intercooler or even your turbo that's going bad or even a wastegate flap. There is literally so many things that can cause a boost leak. But because of the tutorial of this video, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the data logging side. So with the data logging, you usually have got two turbo boost values. You got your requested value and your actual value. So the requested value, there's a lot of terms for it, also known as like your set point and your turbo demand, like your ECU is demanding, let's say 1.2 bar of boost or is requesting 1.2 bar of boost. So whenever you put your foot down, the ECU will immediately tell uh, your turbo that you gotta start boosting up we want 1.2 bar so the second value is your actual value that is how much boost your car is producing at that moment so let's make it less confusing let me give you a quick example let's say under maximum acceleration pedal to the floor your ECU is requesting 1.2 bar of boost so obviously your turbo has got to try its best to reach that 1.2 bar of boost so for whatever reason you're only getting 0.8 bar of boost it means there's a difference from 1.2 to 0.8 of what 0.4 bar boost that you're actually losing so that can be considered as a boost leak so we are going to go over to the laptop now. I'm going to show you guys how to set it up and everything you got to do. And then we're going to go to the road and do a third gear pull. So it is recommended you're going to do it in fourth gear. But if this car fourth gear, the speeds are just too much. I don't feel comfortable with it. And you also want to make sure you do this in a safe area. Do what I say, don't do what I do. So you're going to go to a safe area. You're going to do your pull in third gear or fourth gear. It's fine. The only difference is, is that the longer the gear is, the more data you can get from the pull. Obviously, if you do a pull in first gear, which is like two seconds, is completely different from a fourth gear or fifth gear pull which can be like 20 or 30 seconds so it's just all about giving more accurate data and more data for your pull all right so let's go over to the laptop vcds is plugged in the ignition is on and we're gonna go to select control module so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect to the engine and we're gonna give it a few seconds to connect after it has connected, we're going to go to advanced measurement values, and this is where the magic starts. So what we want is we want engine speed. This is not the actual kilometers per hour or miles per hour that you might know. This is the speed that the engine rotates. After that, we're going to go here to the search bar. We're going to search for charge, charge air pressure, specified and actual value. We're going to go and click on both of them. Also, another thing that I just want to do, you don't have to do this, it's just really interesting. We can say acceleration right over here. We've got actually two positions, which I'm not really sure why. For example, we can click on this one, we can click on this one over here. As you can see, the one is displaying a 0%, the other one is displaying a 15%. So if I put my pedal all the way to the floor, the bottom one says 100% and the other one says 89 So I don't know if this acceleration position might be the butterfly valve, the throttle body. But we will see in some good time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the bottom value, which is uh, this one here at the bottom. I'm going to untick this one at the top just to check. Yes, it is fine. So this works on HPA. We'll just divert it to bar or PSI afterwards. So from here on, you're about ready. So we're going to say group UDS, we're going to say turbo, and we're going to go to log. So over here, you're going to say where you want to log it. We're just going to say the desktop, and we're going to say boost run. Okay, so we're going to just go and say save. So we're going to go onto the road quickly. We're going to go first gear, second gear, third gear. We're going to put our foot to the floor, hit the start button, and accelerate with our foot down to the floor, 
all the way till the car shifts because this is the DSG so it will automatically shift into fourth gear then we're gonna go and let off the pedal so please do be vigilant put your laptop next to you on the seat don't keep it on your lap or anything like that just hold your hands on you know just reach over click start you're gonna accelerate put your foot down if your car does actually gear back you can just quickly go and gear back up is no train smash so you're just gonna accelerate all the way keep on looking at the road once you've reached where your car shifts you're gonna slow down to the comfortable speed you're gonna go over and just stop it up again i just placed the car into manual mode i'm in third gear right now i'm gonna reach over click the start button and we're gonna floor it down there goes the turbo Push it way through all the way till it shifts. There, it just shifts a little off. We're gonna slow down once again just till a comfortable speed. We're gonna look over to our left. We're gonna click the stop button. So let's go quickly home and see how the car actually did. I am back at home now. I never pressed anything since I stopped. The car's engine is currently off, so that's why uh, you guys can see everything is saying not applicable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on done and close. And there we go. So here is once again all the values we have used. So what you guys are going to do now is you're going to open your internet browser. And you're going to go on the link known as datazap.me. Like me. datazap.me. I'll drop it for you guys on the screen as well. So you're going to go. Let's just quickly say done. Go back. You can actually just close this up because we are finished with it now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and obviously if you don't have a profile of datazap.me yet, M-E, you're going to go and create yourself one quickly. You see the file that we actually did a data logging is like on an Excel spreadsheet or something from that sort. So this data zap, all they actually do is just put it for you in a graph just to make it much more easier to read. So what we're going to do is after you created your account, you're going to go to upload log and then you're going to say the first one. And then once it starts opening, you can actually decide what you want to do. You can quickly go and click over here by browse and you can go to the location, which is on the desktop. And here you guys can see boost run. So that's the one we just did now. And the thing what I really like about this, what do I call it? This website is that you can actually keep your public on. This will allow everyone to be actually able to go on this, what do you call it? Uh, on my profile and see the data log for yourself so i don't know how you actually search for it if you do search for it just search for sabertooth performance uh here we can give it a title this was just like uh boost run you know what i'll come back and just fill in this uh all of this stuff later i don't really want to waste too much time on this now because you guys are probably interested interested to see how it's going to look like so we're going to go to save real quick and there we go, it's quickly compiling everything. So let's scroll quickly a little bit down. What you're seeing over here is the engine RPMs. As you can see, we started off at about 2000 RPMs. We accelerated all the way till about 6200 RPMs, which is a little bit more than the previous time. I think the previous time it was on the dot 6000 RPMs. EC, the TCU has got a mind of its own. So right over here, after it shifted to fourth gear, we, we were about at 4.9, and we just freed all the way down so that we can stop the data logging. If we go a little bit further down, we have got some values here at the bottom. So we're going to click on the acceleration position first. As you guys can see at this point, I've placed my foot all the way to the floor. We we're at 100% position the entire way. Up until year when we shifted, I then let go. We were literally at zero, just freeing all the way down until it was safe to stop the, uh, what do you call it, to stop the data logging. So now that you guys know that, it's not really important. It's just for me to show you guys that I've been actually putting my foot down to the floor. So going over, this is the specified uh, value. This is what the car is requesting at that moment. So as you guys can see here, this is exactly where we put our food flat. It requests it all the way to 1,950 HPA. So don't get confused, right? Because 1,000, let's just call it 2,000, right? Uh, 2,000 HPA equals to 0 0.2 bar, which is like 30 PSI. So a lot of people will be like, whoa, your car is boosting 2 bar? No, that's not true. 
you also have atmospheric pressure and if you can go actually on google you can go and search your atmospheric pressure in your area so for me it's just over a thousand so about thousand and thirty or thousand and forty so if we have to subtract that from this we are running about 0 0.9 bar of boost or that is what's being requested at that moment so at maximum Right over here, you guys can see the most that was requested was 2,340, which give or takes about one point, we can say 1.3 bar, if I'm not mistaken, which is actually a little bit more than I thought this car would actually do. But you can see here that it seems like timing or something was pulled because you won't just have a spike, sorry, oh, this thing is in the way. Damn it! Yeah, you won't just have a spike going up and then coming down for no particular reason. So there must probably have been some timing ignition retardant or something because today is actually very hot. If I had to guess it was, oh here it says it's about 24 degrees Celsius. So it's actually a sunny day here in South Africa. So anyway, as you guys can see over here it started to drop, started to drop, started to drop and until this point here where we shifted. So this is what the ECU was requesting. So let's see what the car actually produced. So we're gonna go over here. Actually, okay, this is the moment of truth. Hey guys, if anything goes wrong now, or if it's too low or whatever. Okay, let's do it. Oh, wow. Okay, this is interesting. Let me tell you guys what I'm seeing. This is where the green is where we were supposed to be. Damn it, block. The white that you guys are actually seeing right above it, that is the actual boost. It means that we were actually over boosting. So that might be one of the reasons why my spark plug tips is white. Because that means it's too lean or you're actually, um, what do you call it, or you're running it too hot. So let me tell you guys what you're actually looking at right now. If you do look here in the front stages, let's say from this point where the white line is to the left, you guys will see the green is what we're requesting. So theoretically to practical, things does change. Turbos, unfortunately, can't give you such a quick spool up. So that is why you guys can see it's got a bit of a delay. So obviously, uh, we reach our boost. Well, we can call it just max boost at around 3000 RPMs which is considered a little bit late on these kind of KO3, KO4 kind of turbos. Obviously, if you've got an upgraded one or a bullet one, it can boost even earlier. So anyway, uh, as you guys can see, as soon as we put our foot to the floor, the turbo was working, but it only reaches max boost later. It went over its set point, over where it had to go. It stayed above it all the way. We can just say right over here at 5,500 RPMs, it was actually dropping. And let me tell you, I don't, I don't like the way it dropped because it literally it was in good overboost. Obviously, it could be that the car was trying to get the air to fuel ratio right, trying to decrease the turbo, which is something I just thought about now. It actually dropped below the set point, which means that something over there might be a little bit of a problem because there we can see. It is requesting at this point 1880, which is 0 0.8 bar boost from the turbo, not that uh, atmospheric excluded. And we only did about what? We can say 0 0.79. So there is some boost that went missing there, but it's not too much. But I believe if we could have pushed this car to like 7000 RPMs, if I did a TCU tune, we would have been able to see what was actually happening. So as you guys can see here, we got the normal spike up and coming down. But because this is theoretically, the ECU is much quicker than a turbo. That's why the turbo is just a little bit delayed. But this gives you guys an idea of what is actually going on with the A4 Quattro. And what we're going to do next is probably do some AFR uh, data logging. That's air to fuel ratio mixture. I just want to see what the car is actually doing. And if we are running too lean like we're running now. Remember too lean means too little fuel. Too rich means too much fuel. So I actually just want to see by how much are we running lean. Because... Literally, let's take the worst scenario, which is over here. That is literally almost 0 0.2. That is 0 0.2 uh, bar, which is, I'm not sure how much PCI, maybe 4 or 5 PCI above. So I think it's running pretty darn lean. 
So anyway guys, there we go. I do hope that this video helped everyone out, especially now I know a little bit more about my car. Hopefully this can help you guys out find a little bit more out about your car to see if you're underboosting or in my case overboosting. So I think if I, sorry guys, I just got so much running through my mind. I was like, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? And this is the fun thing about cars. It's it's not as simple as people would imagine. And this is only data logging. This is nothing to do with tuning or diagnosing the car and trying to find out the problem, getting your hands dirty and having long sleepless nights and etc. So anyway, guys, there we go. I do hope that everyone enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them as my best. I'll, I don't promise anything. I'll try my best. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to please drop a big like, especially if you found it informative or educational or even entertaining for that case. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel, hit the logo at this bottom corner to subscribe. I think it's this side because it's mirrored, right? So anyway, if you want to see a similar video or one of my most recent videos, hit any icon on the screen and I'll see all of you legends in my next video. But for now, peace out.